Hey there. In this video, we are going to look at what exponential equations are and how you can solve some exponential equations fairly efficiently using the concept of related bases. All right, so solving exponential equations. An exponential equation is one that has an exponential expression in it, as in one where the variable is contained within the exponent of that expression. Exponential equations with related bases, which we'll see in a second what that means, are ones we're gonna look at here. And those you can solve in a fairly simple way just by writing the expression that's on each side of the equation using a common base, the same base. And then once you have two expressions where the bases are the same, then the expressions that are in the exponents have to also be equivalent. All right, so let's see what I mean by that here. So we have a couple of examples to start with here. And the first one, probably you can solve it just by looking at it. It says seven to the power of X equals 49. Now again, the reason this is an exponential equation is because the variable is in the exponent. You've likely solved equations that have exponents in them, but the variable probably hasn't been involved. Like you might have solved something like that. It does have an exponent involved, but the variable is not part of it. So that doesn't make it an exponential equation. This is where the variable is in the exponent. Now the strategy again we're using here is if we can write the expression that's on each side using the same base, then we can say that the exponents, if the bases are the same, then the exponents have to be the same. So this one is not to you know, insult your intelligence because you can probably see already that x is gonna be two, but what you're actually thinking there probably is, well, seven to the power of something is 49, and you're just imagining 49 is seven squared. So if you have seven to the power of x equals seven to the power of two, then it must follow that x has to be two, and you're right. That's the solution to that equation. There's that one single solution for that. But that strategy, even if it's not obvious, like in this one, what the value of x is, you can use that same strategy by writing each side as an expression with the same base. So we're looking at ones here where the bases are related, and these are related because you can write both of those. Two and eight are both powers of two. So on the left side, we're gonna leave that alone because it's already written as a power of two. But on the right side, we're gonna change this eight into two to the third because that's what eight is equivalent to. So all we did is replace the eight with two to the third and we're gonna keep everything else the same, x plus one there. Now that you've written it as expressions with the same base, we can look to simplify it. You're gonna to have to use some exponent rules here. If you have a power of a power, you hopefully have seen before that you multiply those two exponents. So the expression on the right can become two to the three times x plus one, or in other words, two to the three x plus three. It's important to realize that this thing is a binomial in the exponent there, so it's gotta be both of those terms are multiplied by three. Common mistake is to forget to multiply that second term by three. And again, on the other side, we still have two to the five x. At this point, you can say if this expression is equivalent to this expression and the bases are the same, then the exponents must also be the same. So you can just equate the exponents. Just say five x has to be equal to three x plus three. And then it's you've reduced it to just a linear equation that you've undoubtedly solved before. And you can solve it the way you always have. If you have 5x equals 3x plus 3, whether you imagine moving that term over or taking away 3x from both sides, that's going to leave you with 2x equals 3. And then that becomes x is 3 over 2 or 1.5. That's your solution, whether you want to express it as a fraction or a decimal. Now, before we move on to anything else here, it's important to remember that you can 
check your solutions. When you're solving any equation, you can check whether you've done this correctly by putting it in, substituting it in there. So if you went and you can go to your calculator if you want to, uh, you can take that original equation there, two to the five, but we're gonna put in that number. We're gonna put in 1.5. And then on the other side, we're gonna put in eight to the 1.5 plus one. And you work that out, you should get the same thing. I'm gonna to go to a calculator to check this. So there on one side, we had two to the power of five times our solution that we found, which was 1.5. That gives us that value. And on the other side, we had eight to the power of our 1.5 plus one. We get the same value there. That is a confirmation that we've done this correctly. All right, let's move on to some more examples. So in this case here, we've got a few where it might be a slight bit more thinking involved here. And the reason why is because these have bases that are related, but it's not where one number is directly a, an integer power of the other number. Before we had two and eight, eight was a power of two. You could write it as two to the third. Whereas here we have four and 32 in our first example, and you can't write four to the power of a whole number or integer here that gives you 32, but they are both powers of two, four and 32. And this, for using this method, it's gonna involve being able to recognize that things are powers of, of the same base. And in this case, powers of two, which hopefully you, you know the first few anyways. So four, we can write as two to the power of two. And then we still need to keep that X there. And 32, we can write as two to the power of five. And if we're gonna continue down there, all we did was replace this 32 with two to the five, and we replaced this four with two to the two. So continuing down, we need to use a exponent rule again over here, the power rule, which says multiply those exponents. So two to the two X equals two to the five. And again, now that we have the same base here on both sides, the exponents have to be equal. So that has to be equal to that. And so we're gonna write 2x equals 5, and if you divide both sides, you get x equals 5 over 2, or if you want it as a decimal, 2.5. We could again check that, and you'd see that it, that it works, that that's our solution. In this case over here, similar thing. We have 9 and 27, and again, it isn't that 27 is a power of 9, but they're both powers of 3. So we can write this 9 as three to the power of two, and then we need everything else still there, four x minus one. And on the other side, we're gonna write this 27 as three to the power of three, and then we're gonna keep that rest of that exponent out here, two x plus three. So again, all we did is change this 27 to three to the three, and we changed this nine to three to the two and kept everything else the same there and then we can follow it down. We're gonna need the power rule, exponent rule on both sides there because we have a power of a power on both sides. So we're gonna write on this side, three to the two times four X minus one is three to the eight X minus two, right? You need to have that two times both terms of that binomial there. And on the other side, three times two X plus three, this has gotta be three to the six X plus nine over there. Now that you've got them both powers of the same base, if the bases are the same, then the exponents have to be the same. So we're gonna equate those two things now, and we're gonna write eight X minus two is the same as six X plus nine, and we can solve it the way we always have. Move that over there, and this over here. If we move the six X over, we have two X on this side, and we have 11 on the other side. And then if we divide, we have, this is 11 over two or 5.5 here. And if you check, you'll find that is the solution for that. All right, we'll do one more. 
Now this is similar, except you might look at it at first and say, whoa, that looks different. The only reason this looks different is because you have this over here, which is 1 16th, and we have to think about how to deal with that fraction there. But if we look at the fact that we have a 16 and an 8, again, those would suggest to you powers of 2. Both of those numbers are powers of 2. So on the right side, it's a little easier to write as a power of 2. Similar to what we did before, we can change the 8 into 2 to the third, and then keep the rest of that there. And all we did is change that 8 to 2 to the third. But on the right, changing this 1 over 16. 16 is 2 to the fourth. 1 over 16, another exponent law, power of a reciprocal like that is a negative power, 2 to the negative 4. If 16 is 2 to the positive 4, 1 over 16 is 2 to the negative 4. So we can change this 1 over 16 to 2 to the negative 4 and keep everything else the same there. And all that's been changed is that. And then we've got our same base on both sides. We just need to simplify it now. This is 2 to the negative 4x, and this is 2 to the 15 minus 3x, again, multiplying both terms in that binomial there. And then we've got same base on both sides, so those exponents must then be equal. So we have negative 4x equals 15 minus 3x. And if we go about solving that, I'm going to move this over here, and if we have that it becomes a positive 3, we're going to have negative 1x, or just, I'm going to write negative x there is positive 15. If negative x is positive 15, we can multiply or divide both sides by negative 1, or in other words, positive x has to be negative 15, and that is our solution. You could again check it on a calculator and you'd find that it would, that it would work. Now we're going to do one more example, this one, where we have the variable only in one place here, but we've got a lot of other stuff going on. We need to think about how we can incorporate all the equation solving skills that you've already been using probably for many years in solving this equation. We have not just an exponential expression here, but we have a couple of other things going on. We've got that it's multiplied by 3, and we've got this minus 375 here. So since that's the thing that we're trying to solve for, we're going to slowly isolate that, and we can do that by just isolating the way we always have, except for first we're going to look to isolate this expression as though it's just a thing on its own. And the very first thing we're going to do is get rid of that minus 375. So if I either think of it as moving it to the other side or doing the inverse, adding 375 to both sides, I am going to have 3 times 5x minus 2, and this is going to be 1875. And then, in my second step of trying to isolate that, I am going to divide by 3 on both sides, right? It's important to realize this x plus 2 does not apply to both of these things. Like, you might be tempted to say, hey, 3 times 5, can't I just make that 15 to the x minus 2? Doesn't work because this only applies to the 5, not to both of them. All right, so we don't want to do that. Instead, if we divide both sides by 3, we're going to get something simpler with just 5x minus 2 on that side, and this is going to be 625 when you divide it by 3. Now it's starting to look similar to some of the examples that we've already done, and so what we need to do is write this, and this is powers of the same base. It so happens that 625 is a power of 5. You might not recognize it as such, but you can break it down pretty quickly. Obviously it's divisible by 5 because it ends in a 5. You divide it by 5, you get 125, if you divide that by 5, you get 25, and so it doesn't take too many. You've got four of them there, so this is 5 to the power of 4. If you don't happen to recognize it, you can just break it down quickly like that. And once we've got it as powers of the same base, we can equate those two exponents again right there, and we have x minus 2 equals 4, and then in that case, x equals 6. You can put that number in there and you'd find that it works out, it checks out okay. All right. All right, so probably before we're done, it's important to recognize that this method that we've looked at here works when you have numbers that are powers of the same base. You can write them as powers of the same base. If this were, for example, over here, something totally different like uh, 327, 
we couldn't use this method because at this point we don't know how to write that as a power of five. Uh, but later on in your study of exponential equations, once you learn about logarithms, you're going to find that you can solve any equation regardless of whether the bases are related or not in that way using logarithms. So that's uh, later on. But for now, this is a quick, fairly simple way to solve equations where the bases are related by writing them both as powers of the same base and then equating the exponents. That's it. Thank you.